Moxie, are you having a snow cone? It might be like an elk pee snow cone. I think that they say that in cold conditions, you know, dehydration is like the silent killer, right? <laughs> Moxie, Greg, and I are riding around the world to raise $100,000 for the nonprofit Girl Up. We're donating 10% of roughly sales to the fundraiser and posting a new episode every week. It's a big dog on two wheels adventure for girls empowerment. So follow along and please lend your support. We had a really nice evening here at this wild site. Greg actually found this site, so so kudos to him. And yeah, we just had this small little area here where we were able to put the tent. We actually had a little fire. I don't think that we were supposed to. Not a single person came by. And we had the little fire area there and we always stayed with it. We made sure that we didn't leave it uh, unattended. Nothing else burnt down, so I think we're... <laughs> We're okay. It always makes me a little bit anxious. I have this whole thing about a fire hazard. So this was a big step for me that we actually had this fire and I didn't have a whole freak out about it. And Moxie was busy all morning now, just running around chasing the squirrels. And she just spent the morning now just running around. And it's just really lovely. There's a whole bunch of wildflowers everywhere, all different colors. And it's funny because one of my favorite YouTube channels is Roots and Refuge Farms. And she does like farming on a homestead type deal where she's got a vegetable uh, farm and she also has animals. And I love watching her stuff because she's really what encouraged me to start gardening uh, when we were in Guatemala. So I watch her stuff when, when we have connection and I have some downtime. And uh, when I saw, uh, when I was watching her, it just sort of reminded me she's got her garden growing and everything. And I look around here and there's all these beautiful wildflowers. And it's just really nice to see that, especially when I don't have my own garden anymore. If you're growing on a vertical trellis like this, like these cattle panel arches, you do need to support things like melons. It'll need to kind of be held up. I usually use like a plastic produce bag, pantyhose, you can cut up a loofah and just tie it to the trellis to give it some support. Today we are going off towards Seattle. We're gonna be in Everett, Washington. The reason why we're in Seattle area is because we need to get Greg's Touratech shock serviced along with the rear disc rotor needs to be replaced, which Doug at the BMW and Ventura told us about and we've been riding with it ever since and now we finally have the option to actually get it done. So he's gonna get that done on his bike. I'm gonna get the Scott oiler installed on mine because Greg has been loving his so we don't have to do any more chain lubing uh, when we stop for his bike, just for mine. Just a quick time out to tell you how you can support the Go Roughly Around the World adventure for Girl Up. You can donate directly to Girl Up at goroughly.com slash world adventure. You can make a purchase at goroughly.com where 10% goes towards the fundraiser. Tell all your friends and family about it. And of course, like this video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much, now back to the adventure. And so we're gonna be in Everett, so it's close enough for us to sort of pass in, drop off the bikes, and then go back. Seattle is really expensive. Looking at Airbnbs and places to stay. Everett, we found a really cute little Airbnb that was within our price range. So that's where we're gonna be for the next few days as we work. And then on Friday, we're gonna start heading off towards Leavenworth, Washington, where the Tour Tech Rally is being held because Greg and I are gonna be presenting about what it's like riding with a big dog on the back. And then we get to leave America and enter Canada. I think this is Mount Rainier, or at least close to it, at least this range. And we just came through the Chinook Pass. And this is the first time that we've seen this much snow. Like, look at this. Like, everything is snow covered. Around here, it's all covered as well. You Not can the see. first time, like, in our lives, right? But, no, like, the on first time trip. on this trip. On this that, trip. And it's June. And it's June. This is June. This is June weather. Yeah. And Moxie's learning that she can uh, eat the snow, lick the snow and eat the snow. So uh, she's got that down already. Moxie, are you having a snow cone? It might be like an elk pee snow cone. 
I think that they say that in cold conditions, you know, dehydration is like the silent killer, right? <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't seem to be bothered by the snow because she is actually laying in it. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I don't think she's quite figured that out. Maybe we've got her jacket on like too nicely. I know, she's too warm. <laughs> So just about 30 or 40 minutes after our stop at the Snowy Pass there, we're back down at a reasonable elevation. The temperature is way warmer. The sun is out. It's really pleasant. And it's time for a snack. Fruits, cheese, bread, and the sound of the river. Matt from Turotech just got done uh, having one of our guys, Nick, rebuild this shock. Um, 50,000 miles on it and the seal heads were still pretty decent but needed to be replaced. The oil was really, really uh, worn out and the nitrogen charge was faded. So it's all rebuilt, refreshed and ready to go another uh, 20 to 30,000 miles before the next rebuild. Up here is a Dakar that has been all around the world and he actually ended up coming back here and he actually built out this, this facility. So it was a really cool thing that he has his bike here. He's got the Dakar. I don't have the Dakar. I have the 650. They're similar. His, his front tire is bigger and he's got all of this stuff on his bike, which I don't necessarily have. But it is cool to see these ones that have made it around the world and have been able to come back. So we are here at Emanuel Shoe Repair. And why did we come? Well, we came because I beat the hell out of my side bag here. And this was from a couple of crashes. But the most recent crash, <laughs> yeah, <being> a <laughs> that's right. So it is, it is all a mess. But uh, this gentleman here that owns Emanuel Shoe Repair was able to put basically this back in because it just tore right out. And the last thing you want to do is just have to throw this away for a simple repair. So next stop. Have a good trip. Thank you. Anytime safety drive, okay? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah for sure. <laughs> and next stop uh -huh. is the Touratech Rally in Plain, Washington. So that's where we're headed. <laughs> Jess and I have a saying, which is, I'm not a new person or you're not a new person when like you shouldn't be making a silly mistake or like don't tell me that I already know because I'm not a new person I'm not new at this right I didn't just fall off the turnip truck so we say I'm not a new person and I did a not a new person thing today which is this whole like first bit of this ride I've kind of been like feeling like I'm low riding and every time we come to a stop at a light my feet are just totally planted too much and it makes me feel great right like somehow maybe I've grown no oh and by the way every time we stop somewhere the camber on these roads is terrible you know I can't get my kickstand down it hits the ground I have to lean the bike and balance it get that kickstand out and then settle the bike down and then maybe it still doesn't settle so clearly I haven't grown what did happen is when they serviced my shock they left it as soft as possible meaning no preload so with all the weight on there, everything just drops down and the shock is almost like completely compressed. And that means that like I'm just riding practically with no shock, right? So mystery solved. <laughs> so what happened here? I got stuck in the rut and then I stopped and then I stalled and then she started fussing so I thought I'd let her down and uh, yeah I'm sort of stuck now. All right I think we should let her down then. I'm trying. <laughs> Yeah.
Would you say that's a little ambitious for her? Yeah, and for me too. Go get it. Yeah, go to town. This is the level of disrespect that Jessica has for me and my bike. It's a pack it out kind of place, so she just takes her, her trash, sticks it in my magic cubby hole there, and in the process, dirties everything. And uh, that's it. Now the trash is thrown away. Obvious, but very important packing tip. So this, uh, the Tillamook has a release valve for uh, getting the, the air out. And sure, you know, this is like, I guess sort of the obvious way to do it. And you just kind of, uh, and you squeeze it. No, 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 no. This is the way to do it. <laughs> Give it a good sit. Just, you know, re like relax yourself. Just be relaxed and just sort of let it all hang and it comes out nicely, and then you can close it up when you're done. So getting to the Tech Rally, it's obvious once you get there, but point your GPS to Plain, Washington, which is basically a gas station, a hardware store, and a hotel, and you'll see all the yellow flags and about a thousand motorcycles, factory trucks, everything. It's obvious. We've made it to the Touratech rally site here in Plain, Washington, and that is a cool thing, but there's actually something cooler that happened this morning, if you can believe it. And that is, we saw a bear. We saw a bear, a black bear walking across the road and like the most bizarre circumstance of all the times to see a bear. Jessica, what did you say last night? I said that this is a place that probably isn't going to have any bears, so don't even bother with the food or anything while we when we wild camp. And this is like fire hazard person. This is the one who's always, if there's something to be concerned about, she's going to be concerned. For some reason, I concerned. didn't think that there would be anything here. And I think the reason is because there's a lot of traffic, right? Like all the tour tech people, so there's like maybe a thousand bikes here. They're going on rides all day. They're zipping around. Some of them are really loud, uh, like dirt bike sounding. So there's just a lot of noise. And our, even though our campsite last night wasn't like congested, there were only a couple of other uh, campers around, like just the area feels that way. It's a weekend, so there's lots of cars, you know, probably from the Seattle area. So this is just not the most right, like remote area that we've been to. And yet we saw a bear. We saw a black bear. Pretty amazing AF that we got to see a bear this morning, supercharged by that. And now we're at the Touratech rally. We're gonna go take a walk around see what's going on here. It started on Thursday, today is Saturday. So we are fashionably late, but that's how it rolls when you're on a trip and you know, you don't always get to choose your timing. Now we're gonna go and do a little walk around to see the vendors. I'm gonna see if there are any other boots, just to try and see the difference between my new boots, my Forma boots, and what else is out there. Uh, Greg seems to think that it's just because I haven't broken them in yet that they're feeling tight and really heavy and hard. But it's really annoying me because I was doing so well with all of the off-road and now when I stand it feels like I've got like bricks on my feet. So I'd like to just try on some other shoes just to see if it's if it's the shoes or if it's me or what the deal is. But we're gonna go in and look around and see what's available. Moxie has been practicing a lot of long-term, long-distance scratching. Last night was all about mosquitoes. It was mosquito infestation. The mosquitoes are a little bit bad here, but uh, we're, we're, we're doing okay. Uh, we went to REI on the way in, or was that yesterday? Yesterday we went to REI and we actually saw those bug nets that you can put on. And we definitely are going to get those for uh, when we start going into BC. But I told Greg, let's just wait until we get closer there. Maybe they've got some different ones or better ones to choose from. And uh, he was like, well, if we'd gotten them now, then we could have worn them this whole time. So I guess he was right. The kind of infestation where when you go into the woods to do your business, you basically have to kind of just be shaking like a towel or rubbing, you know, all around all the time or they settle on you. And then, you know, that's unpleasant. This is the camping area for the Tour Tech Rally. You can see there are many tents and many bikes. It's skewed, spewed, skewed. 
spewed spewed all along this area uh, we actually aren't in this section because when we came in we ran into one of the tour tech guys and he suggested that if we wanted a quieter spot we can go where further over where the vendors are and it's best for moxie so that we can just let her off the leash over there uh, and she won't be around all of these other people so that's best for us but this is what it looks like out here when you're camping sad thing is there's like absolutely no shade so the guys are all like sitting by the trees over here trying to like stay cool um and there are surprisingly large number of those ride-in tents, like the lone rider type, where you can ride your motorcycle in and you can have like your camping area right beside it. Greg and I sort of laughed a little bit about those, those tents in the past because it's like how, in what situation are you gonna be in a place where you can bring your bike right beside you and you don't, it's not like you're like on a slant or that there's a problem with like the incline where you're sleeping. It makes sense now that you would bring one of those tents to a place like this where it is completely flat ground. There's all this space to turn around your bike and so that you can position your tent the way that you want and sleep well and have your bike beside you. So now it makes a lot more sense. It doesn't make that much sense when you're doing an around the world trip and you're not always camping in nice spots like this where uh, you can bring your bike right up to your tent, but it makes sense for this situation. We're here with Ricardo and Marita, and it's such a small world. So Tracy Charles, who you have to check out, is riding with her dog, Rue. She was recently in Colombia, through most of COVID, I think, and adopted a street dog, and then needed a carrier, and we built her a cockpit. And so she's met the two of them, like, just, where where was it, Ricardo? That this she was in Son Son, yeah. about two hours from Medellin. And there was no drinking that went on. Everything was totally no above board. No drinking whatsoever, no. Okay. All on the up and up. Nobody had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and now I think Tracy is in Ecuador or something. But like, it's just a small kind of moto world, right? Yeah, yeah. The world is made for extroverts. It's really that um, how to make friends and make people like you. What's the, uh, like the Carnegie um, self-help book? How to win friends and make people like you? How to win friends and... Win friends, earn friends, win, how to win friends. The point is, the world really is built around extroverts, right? Like outgoing on all the time, go, go, go. And that doesn't always work for an introvert. We're the type of introvert that's like, we're outgoing and engaging in spurts. But at a certain point, at a certain age, like you get to know who you are and you're not really gonna change that. And some things you don't really wanna change about yourself because it's not a good or a bad thing, it's just a who you are. And so we have definitely found at events where there's lots of people around that we have to take a moment, pull back, and just sort of be as much, in this case, in the forest as we can. We found a little corner of the woods here where although you can hear all the bikes shooting by and I think there's like a car alarm going off in the background and this fucking squirrel is like baiting Moxie for the last five, 10 minutes. And yet, it's just a moment to be calm, be tranquil, and recharge your battery in a, in a sort of mini kind of way before you go back out and really enjoy engaging with everybody. So it's not a like wallflowery sort of don't wanna talk to anybody, don't wanna be around anybody. It's just very much, you need a, like a mini charge, like you just plug your phone in for like a mini charge. It's not, you're not an overnight charge. You just, your, your battery's into that like low battery mode and you charge it a bit, you get it back up to 40, 50% and then you go on doing your things. So that's what we're doing right now. This is Shell of Shiedi V. Shiedi V has basically been spearheaded by Turatec. They wanted to put together a women's program. And so that was back in 2015. And since then it has kind of grown into training. And of course we support other women and whatever it is that they're doing in the motorcycle industry. We're trying to build skills to women and so they can get out and do some off-road riding and hopefully get into some backcountry discovery routes. 
Anybody out there that's kind of interested in getting into this field, I am really looking for some help. And so my email is Shalmarie Wilson, S-H-A-L-M-A-R-I-E Wilson at gmail.com. So years ago, when I first, uh, we first got to Guatemala, Greg ended up getting me one of the She ADV shirts. And it was funny because that was sort of my first sort of foray into showing off that I was an adventure rider. Even though I still wasn't 100% there, but I sort of, I uh, had that feeling like I could be. And so he got me that shirt and it was a long sleeve shirt of a woman riding her motorcycle with the She ADV on it. I wore that thing out. It's like completely dead and it was a long sleeve. Uh, and so I don't have it anymore, but we stopped at Chi ADV here at the Tour Tech Rally and they were so kind enough to give me a new one. So now I have my new Chi ADV with the woman riding and this is going to be perfect to take all around the world with me. The Tour Tech Rally is still hot and heavy going on over there and over here is go roughly. <laughs> we've we've set up camp. This one is shit disturbing the grass and really basically being a kibble fed lawnmower. We got ourselves a couple of hard ciders because that was on tap basically. And what's uh, on tap for food tonight? Uh, just some roasted vegetables. I don't need your so Jessica, what what have I been carrying around basically for two days now? Uh, lots of small potatoes. Can we see the bag? It's not that big. It's, yeah, not, baby. it's not that big. Okay, filled with small baby potatoes. Four cups of vegetables. It's 1.5 pounds. You're such a baby for 1.5 pounds? Uh, yeah, on a motorcycle. And that's just the potatoes. Now, I see over here <laughs> some peppers. Now, aside from the peppers actually being a very refreshing little uh, raw snack, can we see the bag that all the peppers came in? Probably should can it up. Okay, that's not of that's not of interest. Yeah, I mean the peppers don't weigh a lot, they but what are they? They are bulky, mm, bulky. bulky. Today was the last day of the Tour Tech Rally. Everybody is basically leaving. There's only just a few people left. Uh, some of the moto campers further down over there. <laughs> and now we are ready to go. So we are gonna head towards Leavenworth, which is like a little Swiss town. And then that's gonna take us down and up and we start going north towards the border with BC. So Jessers, yeah. you're in your homeland, the land of your birth. If you're Canadian yeah. and somebody gets in your face and tries to start a fight, what do you do? I don't know. You sick a moose on them. And yes, that's where we are. We are in sick moose. Hi guys. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed the episode. There were a lot of motorcyclists in this stretch when we were going to the Tour Tech Rally. Uh, it's the most that we've really seen this whole trip so far. And you know, in Guatemala, there's all these little motorbikes, like these little 150cc type bikes, little street bikes, 250s. Um, and when they ride, they don't wave at each other. They just are sort of going about their business. Uh, when we were riding in Guatemala and we would see another adventure bike or a bigger bike, we would always do the wave. And so the, we didn't do it that often because there really weren't that many in the little town that we were living in. And when we were on the, the Pan American, yes, occasionally we would, but it wasn't really that common. So when we came into the States and now in this sort of stretch, there have just been so many as the weather's turned nicer and the summer uh, is on, people are, are out riding. So you're constantly doing the two finger wave to everybody who's passing. And I know in the past, like people are really like, should I do it to that bike? Like Harley riders should be doing it to BMW riders or they shouldn't or like adventure riders to cruisers. And, and I just do it to everybody because I think it's fun and I like to wave to people. So I do it to everybody, but it gets tiring, you know, like to take your hand off, especially when there's like 10, 10 bikes in a row and each one is doing it to you. You feel like you got to do it back to them. Uh, and yeah, it just, it gets to be a, a bit much. And 
for for Greg, what he started to do, he started to slack. What he would do is he'd be riding along and instead of like bringing his hand all the way down and have show the two fingers and do the wave, uh, he was getting tired. So he started to just lift his hand up a little bit. And then the two fingers turned into like all the fingers. And then all of a sudden, you know what it looked like? It looked like a left-handed like Heil Hitler. And when I saw that, I was like, Greg, you can't do that anymore. No, 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 you, you got to like make an effort, two fingers down to the bottom uh, and wave uh, and do it all the time because you don't want to look like uh, one of those motorcyclists who is not friendly with others. So you have to do it right. <laughs> so since then, he's, he's changed, his, changed his ways and now he does the two finger wave correctly uh, and to the riders that we pass. I haven't figured out how to get Moxie to do like a paw out. That would be the next step, but that, that would take a little bit more training and time. So we're not there just yet. The Tour Tech Rally was pretty like stellar. Like there were a lot of vendors, there were a lot of riders. And and if you don't know what it is, it's it's a motorcycle rally where there are motorcycle vendors that are there. There are um, classes or, or uh, talks that people, uh, people give. Um, and then it's all motorcycle camping too, right? And then there are the skills testing areas where you can go through obstacle courses. Uh, and then uh, She ADV and another uh, organization were also doing uh, rides, uh, like either off-road rides and training or just um, off-road training in that section there. And it was cool to be be part of it, be part of people who are all doing a similar thing and all have uh, similar interests. And we had that chance to to talk about what it was like riding with Moxie. And I think everyone sort of got a kick out of it because it is something unique. Most people had never seen it before. Uh, but for us, what was really extra special about it is that two, two of our cockpit riders were at the event. Uh, unfortunately, neither of them had their dogs with them, but we were able to actually see one of the cockpits live and in person. And for us, it was special because we do all of this remotely. So we we chat with our customers um, online through email. We sometimes have video calls with them when we're doing the measurements, but it's not like we ever get to see the cockpit out there in person. So this was really the, the first time that we got to, to view it, to see how it all fit on their bike, what it looked like, how they were using it. Um, and one of our riders, he was uh, showing how he, he was using it because he didn't have the dog in it. He was using it as like an area for storage. So he was able to like put his tires on it. Uh, it was it was pretty fantastic. And it's it, it was great for us because it, it just it, it really sort of brings it all home when you're doing it online like that all the time and all you, you, you receive back photos and, and videos of people riding with their dogs after they've installed it, they've gone on their first rides and they're showing it and they're so excited. Um, it's it really warms your heart, you know, like to have people come back and say, oh, my God, your product was the thing that got me to go out there. And now I can do it with my dog and we have this fantastic time together. But to see it in person, you know, that's that's extra special. So you'll have to tune in for next week's episode because in next week you're actually going to see that. Uh, you'll see the other riders and uh, it's, it's, it's going to be a good one. So make sure that you subscribe, have your notifications turned on. Put some comments down in the comments section if you have any questions for us about riding with your dog or about what we're up to. Um, I love answering those, so, so please do. And don't forget to uh, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at GoRoughly. Thanks so much for watching, guys. and We'll talk to you soon.